Hey, we finally made it. After three long videos without any new algorithms, we are finally able to leave Pygame behind us, at least for now. So let's get back to our study of sorting algorithms and learn about a new family of algorithms which are related to an algorithm called insertion sort. But we are not concerning ourselves with the canonical insertion sort algorithm just yet. Instead, in this video, we will learn about an algorithm called garden gnome or gnome sort, which is an inferior version of the original insertion sort algorithm. Now, if you think that gnome sort sounds rather funny, wait until you hear the explanation of how this algorithm works. The whole thing will sound even more childish than before. On a sunny spring day, a garden gnome tries to sort the flower pots in his garden. The gnome aligns all of the pots in random order. He starts at the leftmost flower pot and takes one step forward. He now compares the second leftmost pot with the very first flower pot. If the current flower pot is greater than its predecessor, the gnome takes another step to the right. Otherwise, the gnome swaps these two pots and takes a step back. The garden gnome repeats these steps until he reaches the end of the array and by then his garden will be in perfect order. Obviously, this is not a very sophisticated technique for sorting. Similar to bubble sort, the algorithm will run into the turtle problem. That is, it will take a long time to sort small array elements that start out towards the end of the array. But it's nonetheless a good place to start with insertion sort style algorithms. Enjoy the coding. So I have opened a new script called gnome.py. And let's have a quick look at how this algorithm works. So we have our unsorted array 2, 5, 4, 1, and 3. And what gnome sort now does is it starts at the very left of the array. So the gnome is located on this 2 here. Now the gnome makes a step forward. So the gnome is now located on the second array element, which is this 5. And then the gnome compares this element and the element preceding it. So it's comparing five and two, and five is greater than two, so nothing needs to be done here. So the gnome advances a further step. So now we are here, located on this four. The gnome looks back and realizes, well, four is not greater than five, so the gnome has to make a swap, and then it has to go back. And after we made the swap, and after we move back one step, the array now reads 2, 4, 5, 1, 3, and the gnome is now located on this 4. The gnome now again compares 4 and 2. This is an order, so nothing has to be done here. Gnome advances further. It's now located on this 5, 2, 4, 5, 1, 3. We are on this 5. 5 is greater than 4. Nothing has to be done here. The gnome advances even further. Now the gnome is located on this 1. And here the gnome now compares one and five. One is not greater than five, so we gotta make a swap and we have to go back. And this pattern, because one is so small and because one eventually will have to be at the very left of the array, this pattern will now repeat itself a couple of times. So we make the first swap. One is now before five, and the gnome is again located on this one. Now the gnome compares one, the element preceding it, which is this four, and again, one is not greater than four, so we have to make another swap and we have to go back once more. The array now reads two, one, four, five, three, and the arrays, again, located on the one. We compare one and two. One is not greater than two, so we have to swap once more and we have to go back one more time. We are now at the very left of the array and the array now reads one, two, five, four, five, and three. Now there's nothing to compare to the left of one, so we advance one step ahead. We are now on this two. We look back to one. This appears to be in order, so we advance one step further. We now compare four and two. Again, this is perfectly fine. We, we advance once more. So we are now located on this five. We compare five and four. Nothing needs to be done here. We advance even further. We have now reached the end of the array. But here, we compare 3 and 5. Remember, we're always looking back. 
And here we can see that three is not greater than five. So we have to make a swap and then we have to go back. So the array now reads one, two, four, three, and five. We are now located on this three. We are now comparing it with four. We have to make another swap because three again is not smaller, uh, it's not greater than four. We make the swap and we go back and the array now reads so one, two, three, four, five. And this is now the final configuration. Of course, there will be a couple of more steps involved until the array is sorted and the algorithm knows that it's sorted, but of course it's already sorted here. So we are not gonna work or go through any additional steps, but this is really just how GNOME sort works. It's fairly simple, it's not too powerful, but it's a, a good introduction into this next group of sorting algorithms. Okay, so let's code this. As always, we'll start by defining a new function. We're gonna call this GNOME sort. Uh, this was a mistake. GNOME sort, which will just take the array and then, as always, we'll start by defining the length of the array as a new local variable. And here we'll now set i equal to zero. Now we'll start a while loop. So while i is less than n, so you could basically just refer to this as while we haven't reached the end of the array yet. And while that is the case, we are doing two things. So we go right if the current array element is greater than the previous one and we go or we make a swap or let's just say else we make a swap and go left so this is what the gnome does we are going right if everything is perfectly fine and if that is not the case then we have to make a swap and then we go left okay so this is what we're constantly doing in this iterative while loop what we gotta make sure of, however, um, or if we are not at the start. Oh, I'm sorry, this, or if we are at the start, right? So if we are at level zero, then we are going to advance, right? So if we are at element zero, we, we cannot make a swap with anything that's coming forward and we cannot go left any further. So in this case, we also have to advance to, to the next element. So this is important here. So if a i is greater than a i minus one or i equals zero, well, in that case, we're going to yield. So we'll have a, then we'll yield i, I think. And let's not introduce any highlights just yet. And down here, we're now making, uh, we're not making any swaps. Instead, we are increasing i by one. So we've just advanced one element to the right. Okay, otherwise down here, this is where we'll make the swap. We could also have the yield statement down here. We can just play around with this and see which animation we prefer. Um, anyway, if we have to make a swap, well, in that case, I'll just type else here. Um, we gotta indent this so it, it aligns with this um, if statement up here. And in that case, well, we can also yield, yeah, we can do that. And here, I think we'll use another color to indicate um, where I is located because uh, now we're about to swap. So now let's make the swap. So AI and AI minus one are equal to AI minus one and AI in reverse order. This made the swap and now we have to go back one step. So we reduce I by one. And this is really all we have to do here. So I'm just gonna save this script. This is now called gnome.py. And I just opened the animate.py script. And what's very important here is that we now have to add this new algorithm to our algorithms dictionary. So I'm just gonna call this gnome sort. sort. And well, we're just now, now we're going to add this down here. So I'm just gonna say gnome sort. And then we'll also have to import this. So this is now gnome, and here we have gnome sort. Uh, no, this was not right. Just deleted the algorithm declaration. Okay, uh, dictionary declaration. And so now we import gnome, or from gnome we import gnome sort, and then we add gnome sort to our algorithms dictionary. And if we save anime.py, and if we go back to the main, we should now be able to call gnome sort up here 
and unfortunately this is not working so let's go back to the animate script the problem is that you have to add a comma here so after the cocktail sword we're now appending or like adding to this dictionary here so we have to have a comma here let's go back to the main run this once more and we get another error and this is a pretty simple one to fix I added one too many um, brackets up here, so I was turning or yielding more from this function than the animate function would expect. So if we run this now, there we go. So we can now see how, um, let's reduce the speed, remember that we now have this capability. Um, if we are advancing to the right, there is a red bar, a red highlight being used. But if we go back, we now have a yellow bar. And this is kind of cool because we can now see what the algorithm is doing one step at a time. Um, I'm now going to increase this, the speed here. And yeah, I think this shouldn't take too long because remember how we implemented the speed control and it's now running very fast. We could make the speed go even faster. Remember how we kind of constrain, constrained it in the last video. Um, but I don't think this is going to take too long. Of course, the waiting time with each iteration, if you will, will be a little longer because if we now have to take, say, this element down here, so in a couple of steps down the road, we'll use this element down here, which is very small, and now we have to move it all the way over here. So this takes just some time. A tall element like this one, you will see this, will take no time at all. I think, in fact, this is the tallest element in the entire array, the largest element. So once we approach this, the algorithm seemingly will just move straight like over this element because it's already in the exact same position as it needs to be. So this won't take too long. It's not happening and you did not really notice anything. But now there's um, these two small elements which have to go all the way over here. Now we have to go back up. And this is also the main problem with Gnome Sword that it just takes so long to move back and forth. But well, this is just an introduction and we'll soon see how Gnome Sword can be improved on or how Gnome Sword was not really the starting version of this algorithm, which was then improved. No, well, first came Selection Sword and then um, we went back to Gnome Sword, which was this inferior version to it. Okay, so now we are done with it. Everything is sorted. And I think I just said Selection Sword. This has to be Insertion Sword because we are taking elements from the right-hand side of the array, which is not sorted, and inserting them in the correct position in the left of the array. And what takes what takes so long for Gnome Sword to do is to find the proper position where this needs to be inserted, okay? So I think this is now a perfect time to just stop this video. I'll see you in the next one where we'll code proper Insertion Sort.